The downpour created transport chaos on an extraordinary scale. By road, by rail and by air, moving anywhere became a logistical nightmare. Hundreds of barefooted passengers tiptoe through Summerhill train station. I was in Wagga last week. This is actually worse than there. The morning downpour cut the East Hills line for several hours. Olympic Park for most of the day. Travelling by air wasn't much better. Dozens of flights cancelled at Sydney Airport. A Qantas 747 inbound from Hong Kong had to divert to Williamtown Air Base near Newcastle. We were circling around and around. It was so turbulent. More than half of the plane was throwing up. It's just quite scary. By road, even more tales of woe. Oh, I think I can safely say I've certainly never seen any conditions like this across the whole of Sydney that we saw this morning and all those surrounding suburbs. Parked cars swamped by flash floods, others pinned down as they tried to drive through. Now my car's, as you can see, is filled with water. So I'm guessing it's a runner. I want the plan. Jocelyn Basile and her two terrified children escaped their car in Marrickville just as a wall of water rushed through. Pretty traumatic with two young kids and uh, yeah we've just returned to find a complete mess. The car's a complete write off and we're trying to open it to try and salvage as much as we can. A dozen more cars trashed in an underground car park nearby as the waters receded almost as fast as they rose. These roads in suburban Marrickville were also closed. You can see the debris here as well as just how high that water got as it rushed through and as we spin around a little further there's a car that's just stopped dead in its tracks. Gail Wilcox helped rescue the driver who was trapped inside. It's really scary how fast the water came up. He's very lucky because if it had kept coming, he was just, he was just didn't know what to do. Dan Nolan is at Marrickville tonight and Dimity Clancy is at Minto. Let's go to you first, Dan. The roads there look a lot better now. They sure do, Pete. You'd be hard-pressed to imagine that there was even a storm here this morning, but this location here in Illawarra Road in Marrickville, the resident of this house right where we're standing sent us a photo from his front yard, and you can see the difference there with that what looks like an inland sea of water, cars flooded, uh, and it turns out that it was actually high tide at the Cooks River over there behind us at the same time as that deluge came. So it was really a double whammy for the people of Marrickville. Now the good news this afternoon is that the public transport system has pretty much recovered now. There's still a few roads out there that are flooded, but the afternoon commute's going to be nothing like this morning's turmoil. That is good news. Dan, thank you. Let's go to Dimity at Minto. Dimity, the family there have been really unlucky. They certainly have, Pete. The lounge room where I'm standing an hour ago was the scene of a complete disaster. It all unfolded at 2 o'clock this morning. Mohammed Shami, his wife and their three young children were asleep in just the next room. They woke to the sounds of cracking and they came out to the lounge room and noticed first just a small trickle of water yeah. coming from this section of the roof. Then all of a sudden, right before them, the entire lounge room roof came crashing down, bringing with it the soggy insulation. Apparently, the bad weather had moved a couple of the roof tiles which allowed last night's rain to fill up the entire roof cavity. As you can see, Pete, everything in here has been destroyed. You've got speakers, computers, televisions. But Mohammed says all of this can be replaced. But all he cares about tonight, Pete, is that his family, his young family, is OK. Good on, Mohammed Dimity, thank you.